Hristos Anesti, Hristos Voskresha. Words about our monastery. We're 1,100 meters up Mount Kisavos, and we'd like to share our experience with you. You all here who are experienced and experts, we're just a little monastery up a mountain. Our experience has positive and negative sides, which we'll try and humbly share with you. We have no postal delivery. 23 kilometers down the mountain is the next place to collect our mail. We have no telephone landline. We have no bus connection. Four kilometers away, there's a bus once a week, but it's not possible to go and come back in one day. And we are cut off when we have snow. We're a community of 18 nuns with an age range of 23 to 63 from 12 different countries. This provides the background to the reason why we had to face the challenge of using digital technology. It seems to be the first chosen method of communication with our monastery for people today because they come from a digital world. Whether we like it or not, the digital form of communication is how people express themselves, how they communicate with the world, how they get in touch with us when they are looking for something, how they approach the monastery for answers to their life, for their questions, whether it be personal, familial, spiritual, ethical or metaphysical. They communicate by digital means. It used to be that people arrived at monastery for the love of God with a suitcase of only the most basic, important things they needed, which included a pen and pencil. It is not that it's so different now, just that what people consider to be the most necessary and mo most basic now includes their phone, their laptop, iPad, tablet, whatever. Our challenge in the monastery is not to be afraid of this, not to ignore this form of communication, not to throw away this form, but tr to transform it and to use this reality to approach traditional monastic life. For abbots and abbesses and for the older generation, there have been difficulties in seeing the positive side of internet. We need to demythologize the digital enemy. We need to teach people to use digital technology constructively, but not exclusively. They need human interaction and communication. Digital technology can help to lead people towards God as a first step, as an introduction. They can collect information from all kinds of sources, but they need to learn how to understand and organize its use so that it becomes something good and positive. Young people have to see that they still need the personal, intimate relationship with their next and with their spiritual guide in order to begin to come towards God. They have to begin to learn about themselves. For that, they need another person and not digital technology. Things should not stay on the theoretical level. There is the external use of digital technology, bank transactions, shopping online, getting information from the outside, writing talks, etc. The internal use of this technology is to show to the outside world through our website, which is clear but simple. The monastic use of this communication via emails, Skype, etc., to organize visits and to answer general questions concerning the Orthodox Church, about monasticism, or even about nature and organic farming. For us, who are present in three different places, 
on Mount Kisavos, Anatoly, also in a small monastery near Athens in Lavrion, and a new skeet in Estonia. This is very important to be able to communicate quickly and effectively, both by email and Skype, not just concerning practical questions of everyday life, but also for spiritual guidance and support of our sisters there. In Estonia in particular, we have been able to use digital means to continue to teach the sisters, specifically to help with their music. The sisters are involved with official church commission for translating texts into Estonian. They have already translated many liturgical texts into Estonian and are setting them to music. A further project that we have not yet begun, but we hope to begin before long, both for our sisters in Estonia and for us in Anatoly, is to be able to read the Synaxarion online every day for anyone who would like to hear it. Our spiritual father, Pater Dositheus, may be his memory be eternal, while being very traditional and strict on one side, was not afraid of digital technology. He even used it himself when he wrote. He was conservative in the best sense, but not bad backward looking, not afraid of development and change. Many young women who want to join our monastery, but for them, digital technology has been such an integral part of their lives they cannot envisage or manage life without it, particularly at the beginning. We see that they used to share their thoughts with people they virtually know, rather than with their real neighbor. They do not know to write a letter by hand. They read books on their laptop or iPod that they have downloaded, including this is the Holy Bible, the Psalms, the Orologion, the Fathers, and modern spiritual writers. They are used to keeping in touch with their friends and communicating with their families through various social media. Their source of news was through the internet. They used to learn things through podcasts. It's easy enough to tell them to give up their phone, but their laptop too. We also use digital technology for missionary purposes. This digital reality has, is the reason for our being asked to use digital technology in the missionary field. We were asked to give English lessons to Chinese speakers in Taiwan and to use the New Testament as their main reading text. The program used for this was Illuminate Live, organized and sent out by Father John Murotas of the Greek Orthodox Church in Taiwan, starting January 2009. At the moment, we're having a break from these lessons in order to reassess their effectiveness and to see how to make them better. In the Illuminate Live program, the participants could see my screen rather than my face, they could follow everything I wrote or would write during the lesson. It required a lot of preparation on my part in order for the participants not to get bored. It was very tiring as it required continual input from me for 90 minutes. They could hear my voice and should answer themselves. But here was the greatest problem, their reluctance, their fear to speak. They also had the possibility of writing their questions, which they used most of the time rather than daring to speak. They were given my email address and could send any questions and their homework to me, which I corrected and sent back to them, so that each had individual help according to their need. Theoretically, it is a wonderful possibility with this program but we have experienced advantages and possibilities, but also disadvantages and limitations. The advantages, we're able to bring the living word of God in a spoken form, explaining word for word, passage for passage, 
giving an insight into its, its meaning. We offer English language lessons and explanations of the syntax and grammar, and give the possibility of use of English and dialogue. The direct contact encourage or should encourage discussion. Free lessons mean that anyone can take part, regardless of their financial situation. And the lessons are scheduled so they can be followed after work. There is a lot of enthusiasm at the beginning. There's a great flexibility in participation. But there are disadvantages. The lack of face-to-face -face contact, as one would have in a classroom situation, made it very impersonal and could hide. Uh, for the translators, I shall skip the rest of this page and go on because I don't want to go over time. I'd like to just mention the digital reality has some very serious drawbacks. Twice now in this last year, we in our monastery have been subject to something I would call digital terror. Both had to do with slanderous emails and a blog from people who needed specialized help, shall we say. It seems that anyone, however sane or however sick they may be, can write an email or write a blog accusing someone of something. It seems that one is helpless in this kind of situation unless one takes these people to court. But if one is aware that the person concerned is sick, what's the point of taking them to court? But once slanderous information is published on the internet, it seems there can be there to stay. This is certainly a new challenge for us today, a challenge for our humility. On a final note, however, we have another experience. We had an email one day from a young American student who was studying ancient Greek in her university in America. She was due to come to Greece for a few months. She had typed into computer, monastery, Greek language, music, church, organic farming, care for the environment, and she came up with our monastery and came to visit with us. Over the following months in Greece, she was accompanied, accompanied by one of our sisters. After she arrived back in America, she realized that she had become open to God and wanted to come back and join the monastery. After catechesis, she was baptized and became a novice. She kept in touch with some close friends of the university, and a short time later, her best friend came to visit her who had been spiritually hunting on the internet, in her words. This best friend followed her same path. Sister Theocleti became Rasophora in May 2013. Six months later, she started to get sick. Sister Theocleti was tonsured megaloscoma 25th of April 2014 and died 18th of August 2014, aged 30. Thanking God that she found us on the internet, saying it had been the happiest time of her life. Even God used digital pastoral signs. <laughs>